Hello Model Railroaders, today we're going to be building an HO scale AccuRail ACF two bay covered hopper kit lettered for Chicago Northwestern. This model is unique because it's a limited run car offered by the Chicago Northwestern Historical Society. The Chicago Northwestern Historical Society is releasing three different road numbers of this car. If you buy them direct from the Historical Society, they cost $34 each or $85 for all three. I always love building Accurail kits. They're pretty straightforward, they're relatively inexpensive, and they have some nice details for the price. They're also great runners. I even have some Accurail cars from the 1990s. They look and run well and are a great value. The kits are neatly packaged within the box. The included instructions are very clear and easy to follow. Also included on the instructions are the tools and materials needed to construct the kit. These kits are not terribly complicated. All of the parts needed to complete the build are on two sprues. The kit comes with a bag of trucks and couplers and hardware to assemble them. I will be changing these out for my own wheels and couplers, however. I'll still be using the screws, though, to mount everything together. Looking over the shell of the covered hopper, I noticed that the paint is pretty decent and closely resembles that of the prototype. I like the lettering and it is clear and legible even without magnification. This car is going to look great weathered up after I complete the assembly. To begin the assembly, I remove all of the parts from the sprues. I use a sprue cutter here because too often I've broken detail parts or shot the parts across the room using other tools than a sprue cutter to remove them. For me, the sprue cutter is one of those little modeling tips that I picked up that cleanly and safely remove parts for my models without me losing them or crushing them with my ham hands. After I get all the parts cut away from the sprues, I start to clean them up. I like to use a number 11 X-Acto blade here to clean up the mold seams and the sprue gates. I drag the blade across the surface lightly, scraping away the unwanted materials. I try to avoid whittling or cutting during this stage because it's difficult to control how much material your knife will take off. And remember, a sharp tool does what you want it to do and a dull tool does what it wants. Now, speaking of a sharp tool, it's time to mention that this kit in this video was provided by Model Railroad News. I was contacted by the magazine to put together a review of the kit for their magazine and as a little bonus, I decided to make a video about my experience building this kit. The folks over at Model Railroad News put together a great magazine that informs me of all of my favorite products within the hobby of model railroading. You can check them out at modelrailroadnews.com. Now for the assembly. The first step is to put on the outlet gates on the bottom of the car. I like to use Loctite super glue to assemble the entire model. It is my favorite all-purpose glue for building models. The kit goes together pretty smoothly. The directions help you and ensure that you assemble things in the right order. It slaps together pretty fast, but before we finish this build, it's time that we learn a bit about the prototype. In 1967, the Chicago Northwestern placed an order with American Car and Foundry for 300 2,970 cubic foot, two bay covered hoppers. The numbers were in the series of 175,000 to 175,299. These cars were purchased to be used for various dense non-food commodities and came delivered in very light gray with black lettering and a black and white railway herald. And in 1976, 64 of these cars in the series were modified for bentonite service. The non-modified cars remained in service for other commodities like cement. And during the subsequent years, many received a new coat of gray, green, or yellow paint as they went through the paint shops in Clinton, Iowa. This information was provided by the Chicago Northwestern Historical Society. The Chicago Northwestern Historical Society is out there preserving the history of the Chicago Northwestern and its family of railroads. They have an extensive archive of pictures, timetables, equipment drawings, and any other railroad documentation that you can think of. 
They have recently broke ground on a new building for their archives on the grounds of the Illinois Railroad Museum. Check them out at cnwhs.org where you can join up and help preserve the history of the Chicago and Northwestern. Now back to the build. When I add weight to the car, I actually stick in some extra weight. I use stick-on wheel weights that I bought from O'Reilly Auto Parts. I stick the weights over the bolsters so that they don't create an imbalance in the car and will roll smoothly. With the weights in, it's time to put on the shell on top of the frame and glue down the roof hatches. The last part of the build is adding the couplers and trucks. I first replace the Accurail wheel sets with Intermountain all metal 36 inch wheel sets. They snap in pretty easily and make the car perform much better. I also pitched the Accumate couplers that came with the kit. I replaced them with some KD scale sized 158s. I screw the couplers and trucks into the frame and voila, we have a kit that's almost ready for service. I have to say that the Chicago Northwestern Historical Society's version of the Accurail Covered Hopper is a nice little kit that you can put together in an evening. And it should be a car that any modeler from post-transition era to today could use on their railroad. Don't forget to click here to subscribe to my channel, or better yet, check out another video about building my model railroad or one of my DIY modeling videos. Thanks for watching, and keep her in notch.